Well, hey, welcome to Do Things Make Stuff. Today, we're gonna to talk about the X-Carve and the all new X-Carve Pro. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, am I gonna upgrade to the X-Carve Pro? And it's been a, a big conversation around our house. You see, that's my X-Carve and I love it. Originally, we bought it because my wife wanted to start a business and I told her like, hey, I would love to have it. It sounds like it'd be a super fun toy. I don't need it for what I do, but if you wanna go for this thing, then let's do it. So uh, we ended up getting one. I think it probably been about three and a half years that we've had it and I love it. So let me show you um, how it comes down real quick. So here's my X-Carve. We love this. And before I kind of get into talking about this machine itself, um, if you're just interested in why I am not going to get a X-Carve Pro, um, I'll put a, a timestamp at the bottom where you can just jump forward to my reasons why. But I do want to talk about this machine just a little bit. So if you want to hear about my thoughts on the X-Carve and why I love this and the upgrades that I've made to this one, um, then stick around. If you want to hear about the X-Carve Pro, go ahead and jump forward and I'll tell you a little bit about my thoughts about the X-Carve Pro. Um, so, um, this is the X carve. Let me let's see. All right. So I'm in a one car garage and for the most part, this is a dedicated wood shop. It's also, uh, a laundry area behind me, which is an unfortunate combination of things in a small garage. But when it came to getting a big machine like this, that was our big hiccup is where do we put this thing in a one car garage? Cause it, it takes up a massive amount of space, which is why I came up with the idea to have it fold up against the wall. Um, it folds on top of my workbench, so that way I have a multifunction space. So when I need my workbench, this goes up. When I need the X carve, this comes down. Um, it's also my outfeed table for my table saw. Um, this is a very critical area in my wood shop. Um, so obviously, the limitations of space means when this thing's down, I can't cut on my table saw. Um, and then you know, if I need my table and I'm doing projects on it, I can't pull this thing down. But here's what I would say. Um, we love the X-Carve. We bought this thing and I think it, all in, we were around $2,000 for the initial um, purchase of the 1,000 millimeter by 1,000. So it's the biggest one that they offered at the time. And um, loved, loved, loved it. So immediately my wife started doing some small jobs and um, it paid for itself very rapidly. In a matter of months, the machine had paid for itself, which was huge. That was, if we're assuming that we didn't make any money, all money went towards this machine paid for itself very quickly. and. I love the machine. Setting up ourselves was great because you get to learn about all the little things. Um, this is the one with the X controller and we've made some modifications along the way. So the X carve can cut a 32 by 32 with a thousand millimeter machine, um, 32 inches, um, which is great. You've only got just under two inches of Z height, um, which became a large limiting factor for me, which is why we just swapped some things out. Um, but really quickly, quickly, we learned there's a lot that you can do with it. Now, Easel, the software it comes with, is really great and very user-friendly for somebody like me. Um, I, I, myself and my wife, we both know Illustrator. We do some design in Illustrator, which is very useful for this. Um, but realizing that it's not really a full 3D carving software, like it says it's a 3D or a, a CNC machine, um, I, it can, you have to do other software. So you have to use VCarve Pro um, or Fusion 360 or something to actually do a 3D carve. But the capability of the machine is here. Um, the Easel software does not do that. So you have to have, generate G-code somewhere else and import it into this machine. So if you're looking for a 3D carving, that is more of a software issue than the machine issue. But um, the machine itself does a lot, that kind of 2.5 right so it, it cuts things out um, it, you can do adjustable depths so you can do different layers um, and what's great about this is the the 611 dewalt is a one and a quarter horsepower um, router which is great for the size and the capacity of this machine um, you know ideally you always want bigger and stronger and faster um, but for what this is and the rigidity of the machine this is a great great router um, it's really accessible All right here on top you take these four screws off and if you need to put a new um, uh, 
new magnets in or whatever, um, it's really easy to service and get that rolling. So I keep an extra one. This is actually the palm router I use as well. So if this one were to ever die and I was in the middle of a rush, um, I can just swap this out, put my other one in, and they sell parts and stuff for it everywhere. So uh, I love this. Um, the rigidity of the machine was one of the issues I ran into. So I use uh, Urban Reclaimed Lumber, um, which is kind of all that stuff back here and hiding everywhere around here, um, which means it's it's thick, it's uneven, I'm buying everything rough sawn. So one of the ways that I use my X-Carve is to, as a surface planer, I use it to surface slabs all the time and I love it. Um, it's slow. There are a hundred faster ways to do it, but for me, the purpose of this machine is not speed. This machine is my accessory, it's my helping hand, it's my, my partner in the wood shop if it's something that I just don't have the time to do. So I can set this machine up to run for two hours and I can go do something else. And that's really the big benefit of this machine. Uh, it, it, it does things that I can't do, yes. Um, and what I would say is it does things for me when I don't have the time to do them. So if I have a big slab I need to flatten, I have a jig, I can do it. Um, I've got a, a coffee table I'm about to do, and I'll do that one by hand because it doesn't fit in the machine. But honestly, if it did fit in the machine, I would rather the machine do it because I'd rather spend um, an hour doing something else and let this run for three hours flattening a slab. It's just boring labor work. So um, that's where this machine has, has really come in handy. Um, another way that's coming handy is really fine intricate stuff. Um, I just did a bunch of Christmas ornaments and uh, did them on some um, curly maple and it was, or not maple, what did I use? Oh, walnut. Uh, it was on walnut and they looked awesome. It was great. It was, it was a last minute thing somebody sent me. Hey, can you cut these out? Now, could you scroll saw them? Yes. Well, um, is it cooler because they're actually handmade scroll sawed? Maybe. But at the end of the day, nobody knows. And they just said, hey, I need these cut out of wood. Can you make this? And I was able to say yes. Um, so I love that. Um, now this machine, if we're talking about the machine itself, um, the waste board is awesome. This is my original waste board. I've got a lot of use out of it. It's pretty jacked up and it should probably be replaced. But a lot of times I put a sheet under what I'm cutting. So when I cut through that thing, it cuts the, like the waste board on top of the waste board is the way that I do it. Um, the stepper motors on the sides on this machine are probably a little small, but they're okay. Um, the belts and the pulleys and the system it comes with are the G2 belts. There's a lot of people who upgrade them to the G3 and then the, uh, or even bigger than that. Uh, and then they'll upgrade the belts to something that's um, uh, like Kevlar reinforced or something that's supposed to be stronger. Um, for me, I have a stock setup and I've never had an issue with it. And I'll tell you, um, I don't use the stock settings when I go in easel, I push this thing. I make it run faster and take deeper cuts than are recommended. And I've never had an issue with a belt stretching or breaking or anything. Um, very rarely have I had to touch them. Maybe in the course of three years, I've adjusted them once or twice. And you're going, well, you probably don't use it a lot. I, I have, I, I wish I had a way to actually know, but if you told me, to give you a guess, I would say we've got 1,500 cutting hours, I, I think. I, I don't know. We use this thing a lot. So that has not been an issue for me. Um, there are two things that were an issue for me that we corrected. One of them was um, that the, um, the side rails were not stiff enough. Um, if I was cutting something like a, a flattening a slab, um, they would jiggle and that would cause an issue because you get, well, not only chatter in the bit, but you get an uneven surface plane. Um, so that was an issue. Or if you're cutting something consistently and it were to um, skip or move a little bit, I feel like the edges of a cut weren't as clean as they should be. Um, so uh, I put these, these are um, the TBD CNC. They sell them on Etsy. He also has a website. And we did the two inch risers on the front, which maybe you can see. So the two inch risers on the front um, are great. Uh, it allows me to now put, well, let's measure it. Um, so the lowest part of my machine is four and three eighths. So I can cut four and three eighths from the bottom, which is huge. The stock one comes at two inches. Um, so being able to get that added height was massive. Um, and then adding these stiffeners on the side. 
Um, if I would have known that this was the thing even before the risers, I would have done this instantly. Like X-Carve, you, you might as well just include these because it was a game changer in accuracy, in consistency, in, in the smoothness of the cut itself. Um, so these were incredible. I would do that the second I buy this machine if I were ever get another one. Um, and the, the risers have been mag magnificent. Now the problem with the risers, as soon as you put the risers in, uh, the stock set up here uh, is now short and doesn't go all the way to the bottom. So again, I was using spacers. I made this block set up to where things would go in. I'd jig and I'd screw stuff in. Um, and that worked great for six months or eight months. And I got tired of dealing with it. And I knew that this was always something that I wanted. And this is the square linear rails um, with Z axis with the threaded screw. So the weakness of this machine are, is the belts. The threaded screw is so much more accurate, um, uh, it, it stronger, and it's just better in every single way. So um, I upgraded this. So now this is a seven inches of, of movement on this one, which is unnecessary. But what it allows me to do is go up and get way out of the way when I'm working on it. And it allows me to go all the way to the surface of the machine. So I no longer have to use any sort of spacers or anything underneath. The other thing that I've noticed is um, it is much more accurate, um, which makes me wonder with the accuracy of these belts. But what I've noticed when I've been using this machine to cut through materials, um, it's cutting them through perfectly. Um, I, I am like, barely barely nicking the waste board if i am at all um, i use a micrometer to measure everything before i cut it and um man it, it's a, made a big difference which made me wonder well the sides if they were screws instead of belts they would probably be a lot more accurate now there is the company so this was bought by cnc for newbies um, it, and they were great and they send you the codes to change things in the easel software so that all this works properly. Um, this is the suck it dust extruder, which doesn't work with a linear rail one. Um, I've got it working close, but not quite. So that's a little bit of a frustration right now is I don't have a way to do good dust collection like I did previously. Um, but, um, this setup, the way I have it right now, I, I'm absolutely loving every single part of it. So um, no complaints from me. Um, I think if there were a couple upgrades that I wish I had, um, there are things that the Pro has. So I wish that it wasn't just 32 inches. I wish it was 40, uh, you know, 48 or 50 inches maybe, so I could go just past 48. Um, so that way I can put a full, a full slab in here, um, a sheet of plywood. I've multiple times almost bought the, um, the Shaper Origin because I thought, man, I, there's people ask me to make something that's too big for my machine and I have to outsource it. At some point, it's going to be worth it for me just to buy a $2,000 machine um, to be able to make those cuts. Um, recently, I now have a contact over um, Lineman Equipment who's got a CNC shop, so that kind of changes that for me a little bit. But let's jump into the Pro. Now, I am not going to get the Pro. I was really excited when I heard that the X-Carve was coming out with something new. I was really excited because I thought, well, this is Gen 2. What would Gen 3 look like? Would it maybe be a longer than 1,000? Would we go to 1,500 by 1,500? Um, would they change some of this um, to have more vertical space? Would they get rid of the belts or make the belts beefier? Um, you know, one of the big upgrades here was a bigger motor. This is, I think, a 290. Um... It doesn't say, I don't know which one that is, um, but I think it's like, it, I think it's the 290 ounce or maybe it's 189, which these ones on the side are, are, you know, half of that. So bigger motors means more power, which means more speed, which needs stronger other things to, so I was like, okay, maybe it'll be some of that. Now, when the machine launched, it is a completely different machine, which is why they're calling it the X-Carve Pro. Now, if you're like me, you might've got something in the mail that I dropped on the ground. Uh, you just got one of these in the mail today, um, which is one of the things that prompted me to make this video of, am I gonna buy this? Because everything in front of me says, it's 40% off, now is the time. December 5th is the end of, of the promo. So do you buy the X-Carve Pro? And I think the answer is no. And I've actually uh, emailed Inventables. Uh, I've had some conversations with their team. 
um, just by email. And that's one of the other things I would say has always been great about Inventables. Man, the community online is incredible, but the team itself, the customer support has been awesome. The only one thing that ever went wrong on our machine is I had a wire break. Um, and they sent me out a, just the new wire. Um, originally they sell it with a, a, a kit with the stepper motors and all the new wires, which is only like 80 bucks anyway. So part of me thought I should just own that just in case. Um, but they were happy just to send me out the one wire. I brought it, I plugged it in and I was off and running really rapidly and they were really great. So, um, I will say that this X carve, uh, this inventables team is incredible. Um, and I really appreciate them, them emailing back and forth with me and, and allowing me to kind of share what I thought. Um, and, and hear a little bit back from them. So the X-Carve Pro, I think this is what it comes down to. The X-Carve Pro is no longer geared towards the maker community. It is geared for a full-time wood shop that is doing reproducible items. That That's kind of what I think. Um, and the reason I think that is because if you look at the, the pricing right now is it's like six grand, right? For the, the four by four, I think it's, or maybe it's just past that 6,800 or 6,900. And they're saying that that's at 40% off. It's going to be $12,000 when it's at its normal standard MSRP. And in my head, that's insane. Like I, I get they say it's 25% faster, which is a big deal. It's got a two horsepower motor instead of a one and a quarter. It does have the linear rails and it does have the screws on all of the accesses, which is what I wish this thing had. Um, you know, the, the bigger spindle, the, the chuck that can do more things. Um, the biggest thing that I wish this had that that does have is the pass through capability. Um, to be able to tile. Uh, and I reached out to them about that and said, man, that that's the coolest feature. Um, are you thinking about bringing that to X-Carve? And they said, they're possibly going to be beta, beta testing it. And they would let me know if, um, if, if they are, and they would love to have me beta test it. So I'm excited about that. So in every way it's bigger, it's stronger, it's faster, but I think it's six times the price of this machine. And that's where I just get stuck and go, man, I think I would rather have two of these. Um, I do have maybe seven or $800 in upgrades. Um, and the, there is, uh, the CNC for newbies actually does sell uh, a new side rail kit, um, uh, the X and Y access that's all lead screws. And it's like $1,500. So in my head, for $1,500, you would have a very comparable machine to the X-Carve Pro um, on top of this base package. So really, if I went in, this thing's not doing it for me. I could rebuild it using that setup, and it would be a very close setup to the X-Carve Pro. Um, there are a lot of cool things. The dust collection, it looks beautiful. Um, if you have a really aesthetically pleasing shop and in, in you do videos and stuff, it would probably be awesome. Um, again, more power. I think it said the depth of cut. It, uh, they tested it cutting three quarters of an inch with a quarter inch bit. Um, I don't think they wrote what speed they were cutting at, but um, this machine can't do that. Not even close. I have a buddy who's got a, I think it's like the, the maker bot or maker shop. Um, his CNC machine he was telling me he was cutting quarter inch aluminum in single passes, which I was like, I cut a piece of aluminum and it took me hours to cut a, a, a nameplate, like a little, a little thing. Um, because this machine's not set up for that. This machine isn't, isn't industrial grade. Um, so I think the pro is cool, but it is not for the maker community. It is for the full-time craftsman, the full-time woodworking shop that wants a CNC machine. It's a totally different market. And I think they maybe if they, they, they came at it wrong and by advertising to me, it made me go, man, I feel like you guys totally missed the mark. Um, because I don't think that the people who own this machine are your market. Now, my wife and I, did we talk about buying one? For sure. She was actually very on board and really thought, wait, we should get one of these things um, because our, our little wood shop is growing and doing more things. It really was a hobby and it's continuing to grow. Um, I mean, it's just for fun, but we're doing side jobs and we're making more money and this machine immediately paid for itself. So her question was, well, won't this one? Um, and 
it might, yes. But I don't know. I, I was trying to think of, is there something that I would cut on the X-Carve Pro that I couldn't cut on this one? And the truth is, I don't really know that there is, except for the limitation of the size of the machine. And now that I have a buddy with a CNC shop where they can cut a 10 by 10 foot in a single pass, I think it's really not worth it. Um, I, I love what they're doing. I love that they're taking big leaps and they're doing more things. Um, they're saying that they'll have the new easel software and that it might be different, I think, for that machine. But really, if you're looking for and you're in the maker community and you're wanting a CNC machine that can do incredible things, there's no reason you don't just buy this one. It's $1,800. You can even get smaller ones. I mean, I think, I think they go down and start at like $1,200. Um, when you want to upgrade, do the access risers. Put on this 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 Z from CNC for newbies for 400 bucks. Do little upgrades as you need them, and you have an amazing CNC machine. This thing is incredible. Um, if they add tiling to this, which, I mean, maybe I shouldn't be saying this. They shouldn't. They shouldn't add tiling to this because it's just one more reason to look at the, the X-Carve Pro and go, what the heck do I need that thing for? Um, unless you're saying, I've got a company that's batching stuff out on the CNC machine at such a rapid rate that I either need to buy four more of these or five more of these or I buy one of these. That I understand. Um, but I think for the most of us, this is an amazing machine. I, I will not get the X-Carve Pro. Um, I love it. I love what they're doing with it. I totally love the design of it. I love the look and feel and all of the thought behind it. Um, I just think it's overpriced. For $12,000, um, I, I think I would rather have two of these and and save six thousand dollars truthfully i think i'd rather do this and just save that money so um inventables i love you this video isn't meant to be a, a, a anything harsh if you are a professional woodworker um even i keep saying a lot of the guys that you know were saying they were getting feedback from which are all these professional woodworkers um yes i get it i get it you need an epic cnc machine and at some point this cnc machine will be too small for uh, for a wood shop like that um, but I think for the majority of us out there that want a CNC machine that fits in their garage, um, that's probably not 300 pounds like this one, um, the, the, the normal CNC from Inventables, the X-Carve, is an incredible piece of equipment. So those are just some of my thoughts. I, maybe I kind of rambled a little bit. Um, if you stuck all the way through this video, thanks so much. Um, if you have any questions, please write them below. Um, I've said forever that I was gonna talk about this machine, but there's a thousand other people that have put their feedback and thoughts about the X-Carve out there um, that are much more intelligent and well-spoken than, uh, than I am. So didn't feel like I needed to go into too much depth. But um, thank you for watching. Uh, what I will do real quick is just kind of show you a little bit of my setup. So if you're wondering how to set up this machine, um, I'll show you a little bit about what I've done. I'll pop this thing off the tripod and show you a little bit about my X-Carve. So um, the machine over here, let's see if you can see that. Um, that is how I use it to fold up against the wall. There's a little tray in the back there so I can throw some things back there that I'm not working on. Um, this is my little router tray to hold all of my bits, or at least some of them. Um, basically, I cut these out by hand, drilled a one-inch hole for a black pipe, or a three-quarter inch, I think that is. Um, mounted that to the wall with some angle brackets underneath. And then I made the same type of piece, but it runs the whole length. And they're all the way across, so there's four of them. So I have a, a piece of oak that runs all the way across, trying to give as much strength as I could which is sandwiched by some three quarter inch marine grade birch. And I also made this little drawer in here just to uh, hold my stuff, which is really convenient because when it folds up against the wall, it all stays in there. Um, so you've got your blocks and your hold downs and all that jazz. Um, the different wrenches, the Z block, the, the yeah, height, Z height sensor. And I keep my mouse in there, which is all really convenient. Over here on the side um, is the X controller and I run everything right here off of this tablet. Um, it was the cheapest tablet that I could find that basically that had a USB. Um, do I wish I would have gotten a little nicer one? Yeah, probably, but you know what? I've been using it for a couple years and it works awesome. It's the only thing that it does, just runs that one, that one thing. So the X controller is over there 
And um, as easel fires up, this is kind of the setup. I uh, have a strap on the wall that's into the stud right over there. And I just lift it up, throw a strap around it. It folds up nice against, um, it used to fold up flat. Now, because this is so much higher, um, I do have some issues. It does not hang flat against the wall. Now it kind of hangs out, which is a little scary in California with earthquakes, but I think it's, it's in there well. And when I was talking about slabs that I surfaced, this is one that I recently did. Um, it's a piece of Carolina cherry, and you can see there, there's some lines and stuff on there from the machine, but in general, um, it is very smooth. Um, they did a really good job. So I'm super thankful that the machine can do things like that. Um, you can see my waste board is pretty beat up. Um, so the square linear rails, um, those are them in there. And uh, I really love this thing. It's made a big difference in my workflow. It's made the machine faster and stronger. Um, um, if we're talking about bits, if you're curious, um, these are the standard bits that I work with. Um, so right inside here, you've got two different collets, so some of them can do um, the quarter inch bits. This is just a quarter inch upcut um, that I use a ton whenever I can. That's the one that I go to. Um, I have the X-Carve V-Bits. I, I think they're garbage, totally honestly. Um, if you can see the tips, they're just not great. They're kind of rounded. They're, they're not, I don't know. I haven't had the best luck with them. Um, here's the other one. So they have the 60 degree and the, let's see if I can get the focus. There we go. So yeah, I, I use them a little bit. I don't have the best luck. I would say the V carving capabilities of this machine aren't great, more due to software than anywhere else. Um, the ones with the collars on them are the bits that come from the X carve. Um, and they're good. They're not great. They're good. They do what they, the, I, I typically do the down carving bits, so I have a, a little bit of a better finish on the top. Um, you can see that I have some other V carve bits um, this machine seems to struggle with. Um, but again, I really love these ones. I use this bowling bit, you can see that it burned it up, which I will say, the new X carve, not using this, this router spins too fast. Um, the new X carve will probably spin slower with the X carve Pro. So that will be a big benefit for them. Um, but And then this is my flattening bit. So it's just a carbide one inch flat bit. Does great, it doesn't move too fast, um, but it does a really good job. Um, this one, I honestly have no idea. That's just a two flute. I think the same thing, it's a quarter inch two flute up cut. Um, I haven't, don't think I've ever used that one, maybe once or twice, because um, I really like this one. Uh, but this is probably the other one that I used 75 or 80 percent of the time. It's the white side bits. It's an eighth inch with a quarter inch collet. Um, I really like this. It's just as much sturdier. I can push the machine much faster. Uh, I don't think I've ever broken one of these. I've broken a ton of these um, little tiny guys um, and a couple of the... If I've broken one of these, it's because I did something dumb. Um, and I have a couple more bits like this guy that is for aluminum. Uh, yeah, this guy here is for aluminum. Um, I think this one is a eighth inch for aluminum as well. Um, aluminum just cuts so slow. It's not the, what this machine's made for. So here you go. Here is the easel software. Um, I won't do a tutorial or anything on that because there's so many people, like I said, that have um, done much better things with this. But um, one of the things I do love is that they added, you can just move the machine so I can toggle it. So I love this guy, but there you go. So there's the machine alive and moving. So you can hear the difference of the, just the, the screw versus the, uh, the belts. So there you go. There is the CNC machine. There's the X-Carve. If you have any specific questions, please let me know. If you want to know about anything specific bits I use, I'll put some of them in the, the link below. There you go. So if you have any specific questions, if you want to know about the bits that I use, I'll put links for those, some of my favorite ones uh, for, uh, that I think I've bought most of them on Amazon um, below. And just the combination. I think most of them are the white, white side, I think is what it is. Um, I have one Armana. Um, the rest of them, 
have just been kind of whatever until I figure out what I like. Um, uh, I have one, the Freud bits, which I don't, it, it's the bowling bit. I like the bit. I don't like the one from them is what I'll say. So, all right. Well, hey, thank you for watching. If you watch this video all the way to the end, you are stinking awesome. Um, would love for you to like and subscribe and follow me on uh, Instagram uh, do things make stuff if you have any questions again or if you have another video you'd love to see if you have any questions about anything else that you saw behind me um, please leave it in the comment section um, I've got a new video that I'm gonna start working on the next couple days um, I realize that I only post once every few months I'm gonna try and get better at that um, during this whole COVID thing my original thought was man I should be posting a lot more uh, but I, I haven't life's been crazy so I hope you guys are doing well Again, like, subscribe. If you have any questions, please post them below. Thank you so much for watching. Go and make something.